Hello everyone and welcome to a new course on Code Academy. So the course is called Deploy a Website and I decided to choose this course because now that we know how to make a website, how to organize everything on a website and how to make it look good using HTML and CSS, we now want to know how to deploy it or how to make it, uh, how to make this website available for others so that other people can visit your website as well. So let's have a look at what the course is going to be about. So in the course we will learn about how to deploy a static site to the internet. So what actually is deploy? What does it mean to deploy a website? Deploying means making content or software accessible and available for use. So in our case it's going to be a website. The website that you will deploy in this course will be public or live on the internet. It will be accessible to anyone with open internet access of course because if they don't have internet then they won't be able to access it at any time anywhere in the world. Again as long as they have internet access. So by the end of this course you will have generated a static site, deployed it to the internet and given the website a custom domain name. More about that later on. So let's begin. Instructions, so this is a diagram that tells us how it work or works or illustrates the three main steps we'll cover in this course. So one over here is generating the site. So basically what we have done so far. Two, deploying it to the public internet. And three, assigning it a custom domain name. So the domain name is like mywebsite.com, it can be .org, it can be I don't know, I can't think of anything else right now. It can be .co.uk, yeah, all of those stuff, all of those things. So note, we'll make extensive use of command line and git in this course. If you need to review, check out the corresponding Code Academy courses. So we have actually learned command line before. We haven't learned git, but hopefully we should be fine. We will see. Uh, I might do a lesson on that afterwards if uh, this is, well, I might do a lesson on Git after this course. So let's move on. So the focus of this course will be on the process of deploying a website, not actually creating a website. Therefore, we're either probably going to be using a lot of other source, so they're probably going to give us a lot of it, or uh, we're going to be writing it very quickly. So don't pay too much attention on that. If you want more about how to create the website, then make sure to check out my other two or three courses, I'm not sure at this point. So HTML and CSS and creating a website courses, I know those two. You can check them out to see how to create your website. We'll use a popular tool known as Jekyll, I think that's how it's pronounced, sorry if it's not, to quickly generate a website. So this will help keep the focus on deployment process and quickly provide you with content to deploy, rather than focusing solely on website creation. Which is why only a small section of the course is on creation. So Jekyll is a simple static site generator. Using Jekyll is a very common way of generating a ready to publish static website within seconds. So you can learn more about Jekyll on that website, or that URL whatever you want to call that, that link. An important note, the reason this course uses Jekyll is so that we can generate the static website quickly and focus on deploying it. However, we understand that you may not want to use the Jekyll generated content. So in this case it is possible to follow all of the steps outlined in this course with your own content, just make sure that your HTML is inside of a file called index.html. As you'll see, even Jekyll uses a file created uh, called index.html. So basically if you don't want to use uh, Jekyll you would need to create your own HTML or you can use HTML that we have created throughout the other courses before. So if instead you'd like to learn about creating static sites starting from scratch check out make a website course which is the course I did previously which is the one I was referring to earlier on. So take a look at the official Code Academy blog in the browser to the right. It doesn't seem to be loading properly. It's meant to give you a sense of how fully you can customize a Jekyll site. By the end of this unit, you'll have your own Jekyll generated websites ready to deploy. So one second, let me just get this up. 
Okay, so I found it. I it just didn't work on here, so I just opened it up. And this is what our Jekyll deployed website might look like. So as you can see, it looks quite normal and quite nice, which is why we're going to be using Jekyll. So now I'm going to close the tab and move on with the course. Before we can generate the website, we must install Jekyll. Don't worry, it's not going to be on your computer, it's just going to be here. Uh, Jekyll is a Ruby gem, also known as a Ruby gem. So there is a link for that down there and can be installed from the command line. Don't worry, knowledge of Ruby is not required in order to complete this course. Although there is a Ruby course on Code Academy that I haven't actually covered yet. So stay tuned for that. Uh, once Jekyll is installed, we can use it to generate your website. Instructions install Jekyll by typing the following command in the terminal. Gem, oops, okay. Is it going to actually let me t type in the terminal? Gem, nope, okay, that's quite weird. Okay, so I just refreshed the page and it seems to be working now. Gem install Jekyll, so everything lowercase by the looks of things, and I'm going to run that. Wait for the gem to finish installing before moving on to the next exercise. A successful install will display the following. So, it uh, looks like it's worked. Done installing. Yep, one gem installed. So let's let's actually run that again. Just going. Oh, okay. Gem install Jekyll. That okay? Good. It accepted it now. So if it doesn't work the first time, you can just retype it again, and it's going to work. Hopefully, no errors come up by because of installing it twice. That should be fine. Moving on to the next lesson. Great, now that Jekyll is installed, let's generate our website. To do so, we'll use Jekyll's new command and specify a directory name. So the directory will contain all of your site's default content that can be customized later. For example, to generate a website in a directory called My Portfolio Site, we can type something like Jekyll new My Portfolio Site. If you wanted to generate a website in a directory called My Directory, we can type Jekyll new My Directory. But for the sake of the example, I'm going to do this and you cannot copy and paste in terminal because it's terminal portfolio site. We press enter. Let's see what happens. Oops. Okay. Uh, we'll, so note, we'll use directory name my portfolio site in examples throughout the course. Don't worry about the details of the directory structure just yet. We'll give an overview in the upcoming exercises. Okay, so we're going to be fine with that. In the terminal, use Jekyll's new command to generate your static website with a directory named personal website. Oh, so it wants us to call it personal website. Fair enough. A Jekyll new personal dash website. Also, the output on the in the terminal on the website might be slightly slower than the speed that you're typing at because it's done online and it's slightly different. Don't worry too much about that. Use the ls command to verify that the directory was successfully generated. ls, all it does is just lists all of the non-hidden directories or visible directories. The first character of the ls command is lowercase l, not the number one or the, uh, the letter capital I. Just a note, because those three characters sometimes can be confused. Okay, so now we have generated it. Let's move on. So now we want to preview it or see it, see what it looks like. So yeah, that's basically what it's asking. On the web, a server hosts your site's files and makes your website available for everyone to see. However, viewing a website locally, so it's, it's much easier to view it locally, it means that you're viewing the site on your own computer, hence the term locally or local. The site is not, however, available to the public internet. Instead, your computer is acting as the, serv as the server that hosts your site, and only you will be able to see it, unless you actually publish it in the way that we're going to talk about it, or deploy it, actually. So you can view your site locally by using Jekyll serve command, like so. So, Jekyll serve. 
I'm going to type that out later, or press enter for that later. So this command starts a local server that will s serve the files to your com to your computer. So the serve command will also come in handy when you want to preview changes you make to your website so that you know what your website is going to look like before you actually deploy it. Because after you deploy it, you will need to redeploy it again if you may you didn't deploy it correctly or with the correct attributes for example. So by default the address for the local server that Jekyll serve command starts is localhost 4000. So that isn't written in here. So let's just do it. Let's let's type that out localhost colon 4000. There we go. slash good. That's looking fine so far. I know it's bad gateway but don't worry too much. So to view your site locally, you must first navigate to your site's directory using the cd command. Oh, okay. So if you remember from our terminal course to change directories, change directory cd. We do cd and then to where we want to go. So in this case, we want to go to personal website. Then we want to use the serve command. So Jekyll serve. Basically what this is going to do, I think, is just get all of the contents from the current directory that you're in and serve them. Configuration file from there and yeah, all of that has happened. Good, let's try and reloading that. Oop, okay. Next navigate to in the browser view. So we, we want to navigate to there. That does that did not seem to work. Okay. Uh, it wasn't actually supposed to load it there either. Let me figure this out again, sorry. So here we go. Uh, I just copied and pasted it in here and I ran this again just to test it. If it doesn't work, try reloading the page, running it again and putting the URL in here once again. It should work after a while. So basically we are presented with some kind of a default website are given to us by Jekyll. So we have a title that you can actually click in this case and it's going to go to that place, whatever that is. Then you have posts, welcome to Jekyll, subscribe and all of these. So if you guys have any questions about what we have covered today, do feel free to ask in the comments down below. If you dislike this video, then please give it a thumbs down and tell me in the comments how I can improve for next time. But if you did like the video, then make sure to give it a thumbs up share and subscribe. So other than that, thank you guys so much for watching and until next time, goodbye.